You attract who you are, not who you want. You attract who you are, but not necessarily who you want. Now, when I was dating, um, I used to attract these guys that were like not looking for a serious relationship, not, uh, you know, taking me seriously. And I was wanting a serious relationship. I was wanting to find true love, but you attract who you are. Now, not to get a little too personal, but you know, when they say when, when, when the milk is free, they don't buy the cow, the kind of thing, that kind of thing, right? And so, you know, when I finally decided, okay, I'm going to be obedient. I was in a Bible study when I heard these girls talk about um, celibate dating. I was like, what the heck is that? I've never heard of the concept of that before, because um, even though my, my parents went to church, we weren't like they we weren't Christians. They would go occasionally and that kind of thing. So it was the first time I actually ever heard of that. And once I decided, okay, I'm just sick of these guys that are just not um, looking for relationships. I decided to change my ways. I decided to try celibate dating. And all of a sudden, God sent me David, who is you know, respects women and was looking for a deep relationship. And, uh, you know, so it's funny that you don't attract who you want, but you attract who you are. And sometimes we need to look at ourselves and make that change. Um, who am I and who am I attracting? Now, how does this apply to leadership at all? Well, in leadership, we want to have and we want to attract positive, polite, self-motivated people. Would you agree? Well, in order to attract those kinds of people, we need to be working on being positive, polite, and self-motivated as well. So how do we do that? We do that by honing and working on our attitude. That's right. The word of the day is attitude. And we are currently in chapter six of Developing the Leader Within You by John Maxwell. I'm reading the 2.0 version and loving it. But in his book, John Maxwell says, attitude to me is more important than the facts. It's more important than the past, the education, than money, circumstances, failure. Your attitude is more important than success, than what other people think, say, or do, than appearances, your gifts, or your skill. We have a choice every day regarding the attitude that we embrace for the day. John Maxwell also says that the invisible line that separates those who get things done from those who merely dream about them is an attitude of total commitment. You can you you either have a can do attitude or you have a won't do attitude. <laughs> have you ever met the people that just have a won't do attitude? Well. We need to learn and hone the attitude of having a can-do attitude. So when we're faced with challenges, we're faced with uh, obstacles, we turn on our can-do attitude and decide, well, how can I solve this problem? Yes, I got a problem, but how can I resolve this matter? So let's talk about honing a great attitude and why is it important? I've been coached by David Bird, the author of The Tripping Point. And um, some of you guys may remember him when he was coaching the big, the big team years ago. And David Bird said, there's three choices that we have every day that make or break our success in what we're trying to accomplish. The first is our daily action. The steps that we take every day are either moving towards or moving away. Sometimes we think when we don't do it at all that we're standing still, but we're actually moving away. So you're either moving towards or moving away by taking successful action every day in the step of our goal, which is why sharing, you know, our company has the thing about doing two exposures a day. And we've got this culture of sharing Legal Shield with two new people a day. The second thing is your willingness to be held accountable. Your willingness to be held accountable. 
And not everybody is willing to be held accountable. I have times in my career where I don't feel like being held accountable. I just want to coast. I just want to enjoy myself. I don't want to have to report to anybody uh, or tell anybody, you know, what I'm up to and, and how active I am. I just kind of want to hide, hide in the shadows. But if I want to see improvements, if I want to lose 10 pounds, I need somebody holding me accountable to be exercising every day, to be eating, making the healthy eating choices every day. So the willingness to be held accountable when you're ready to get better results. But the third thing and the most important thing David Bird says, as far as a choice that makes or breaks you on the way to success is your attitude. Your attitude is the number one choice that we have every day that makes or breaks the day. Now, let me just share with you um, a double blind experiment conducted by the San Francisco Bay Area and reported by columnist Nell Mahoney. Basically what happened was the principal of the school called some teachers together and said, because you three teachers are the finest in the system and you have the greatest expertise, we're gonna give you 90, high IQ students. We're gonna let you move those students through this next year at their own pace and see how much they can learn. So the teachers and students were excited. And over the next year, the teachers and the students thoroughly enjoyed themselves. The teachers love teaching the brightest students and the students benefited from paying close attention of the instruction of the best skilled teachers. By the end of the year, the students had achieved 20 to 30% more than the other students in the area. At the end of the experiment, the principals called the teachers back together and said, I have a confession. You did not have 90 of the most intellectually prominent students. They were run of the mill students. We took 90 students at random from the system and gave them to you. The teacher said, this means that we are exceptional teachers. And the principal said, well, I have a second confession to make for you. You're not the brightest of teachers. Your names were the first three names we drew out of a hat. How could three average teachers accomplish so much with 90 average students? The teachers and students possess an exceptionally positive and pro proactive attitude. They didn't feel helpless. They didn't think of themselves as victims. They believe they could succeed and they did. So, what is our attitude? Did you know that I have to regularly check how my thinking, if my thinking is stinking? I have to regularly work on my attitude every day. And I know some of you who know me are like, what? No, I thought she was always happy and positive and bubbly. No, I go through life. I, I, I you know, am married. I have children. I have things that happen. You know, I have inconveniences and obstacles, and I'm a human being too. Every single day, I need to start the day by trying to get my mind right. So our morning routine when it comes to honing uh, our great attitude, especially as a leader, nobody wants to follow a leader that's complaining. Nobody wants to follow a leader that's negative and critical. So I need to like get that out of my system by getting it out in the morning, waking up, going on uh, uh, a nice walk, getting the fresh air, getting the blood pumping, right? Getting the endorphins going, eating a healthy meal so my body doesn't feel like crap. If you eat crap, you feel like crap. If you eat healthy, then your body feels energetic and you feel you've got lots of energy and vitality. If you don't feel good, then you don't feel good. <laughs> and when you don't feel good, you, you tend to um, snap at people, make negative comments, right? And when it comes to leadership, energy, energy is everything. Last night on the Ladies of Justice call, we talked about emotional management and energy, physical management, okay? So there's, there's two types of energy that we manage every day. Our physical, our physical, let's see, what did I, how did I say it exactly? Our physical energy and our emotional energy. We can work on our physical energy by doing that exercise, by eating right, drinking water instead of coffee, 
high fructose corn syrup sodas, even diet sodas are just no, no, they're made out of chemicals and the body's like, doesn't know what to do with these chemicals. So that's why people still develop diabetes when they drink diet soda and all that stuff. So taking good care of our um, physical energy, our physical bodies helps produce great energy. Now that's output. When it comes to input, we need to be 100% protective of the inputs we allow in. And we need to be 100% intentional by reading the positive books, by listening to motivational audios, by not reading the negative news and choosing to turn our heads the other way and covering our ears when the negative news is just doom, 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 and gloom, gloom, gloom all the time, right? Sometimes I'm like, ugh, I can't believe I just, I, I saw that by accident when I logged into my Yahoo. I did not want to see that. Oh my gosh, you know, the negative news. So we need to be protective of that and honing a positive attitude um, by doing these things every day will make you an attractive leader. We are talking about uh, honing our attitude and increasing our leadership by being an attractive leader because you're either an attractive leader or you're a repelling leader. That or you're an average leader. Do you want to be repelling average or do you want to be an attractive leader? You don't have to be physically attractive. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, attractive from the inside out. And so uh, one of the things John Maxwell says we could do is to enter the no whining zone. He says, we have a no whining zone at the John Maxwell company. Nobody likes a whiner. Whiners wear people out. There's nothing attractive about someone who complains. Well, what can you do? You can express gratitude by expressing gratitude and just taking a second. Every single time you're thinking starts to become stinking. We need to stop, take a deep breath, and tell God three things that we're thankful for. And then when we're done, tell him three more things that we're thankful for. And then tell him three more things that we're thankful for until we start regaining our positive attitude towards the situation, right? Um, express gratitude for the small and ordinary things. Thank God for this wonderful chai, decaf chai tea, which I'm so excited to have. You know, dear God, thank you for the air in my lungs. Thank you for this, you know, beautiful fall day with the leaves falling off the trees. Even the little things, right, makes us remember. Did you know that 98% of the world lives on less than a dollar a day? And here we are in the United States of America, sometimes feeling like, oh, well, that neighbor has a new car and I don't have a new car. Or that neighbor has this incredible lawn and I don't have this incredible lawn. Do you know the number one thing that, uh, you know, is the death of your happiness is comparison. Comparison is the thief of all joy. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Stop comparing yourself to other leaders. Stop comparing yourself to other, you know, uh, coworkers here and business partners because they're on their journey and you're on your journey. You have a unique story that is going to relate to certain people that God put in your life that he's going to put you in their life to bring hope to them. Hope and encouragement. Speaking of hope and encouragement, I came across a great scripture today. It's Ephesians 4.29. And it says, do not let unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. In other words, be careful about what's coming out of your mouth. You want to make sure that it's positive, it's loving, and it's encouraging because that's how you attract people so you can then influence them in a positive way. If I am being negative, critical, and mean to you, you're not hearing the advice that I'm giving to you. 
But if I'm positive, loving, and encouraging to you, I can get close to you, and then I can give you the advice that you need to hear. Advice coming from somebody that's just critical to you all the time is like, uh, I don't want to hear it, or you're listening with a filter. So if you want to be an effective leader, say those, uh, you know, learn how to be loving and encouraging. There's a cute little poem in this book, Developing the Leader Within You. And the poem is by Tim Hansel. And it says, it's difficult to receive when your fists are clenched. It's impossible to embrace when your arms are crossed. It's difficult to see when your eyes are closed. It's hard to discover when your mind is made up and a heart that has sealed itself off from giving has unknowingly sealed itself off from the ability to receive love. Wow. John Maxwell also shares how the struggles we experience make the success we achieve more worthwhile. It's sweeter. It's sweeter when the, the, the path to success had a little bit of struggle in it, right? It, it's, it's a whole, it feels so good when you had to earn it through the battle scars, right? You had battle scars to get there to feel so good. If it was just easy peasy, then, you know, then you don't appreciate it if it was just handed to you. But because you have to work for it, and Brian Crother says, when you step up to the counter of success, expect to pay full retail. John Maxwell says, without the pain, how would we be able to appreciate our progress? It's so true. So here's the formula for achieving overnight success. Are you ready? You wanna hear the formula for achieving overnight success? Well, John Maxwell says, here it is. You show up every day, you work hard, you try new things, you fail, you improve, you grow, you face countless challenges and rejections, you doubt yourself, you want to quit, but you don't, and you do it all over again and again. Do this for months, years, and even decades, and you can become an overnight success. So of course, you know, that's, that's in jest, but really, that's what it takes. And so in order to go the journey, we need to have a positive attitude. And if we want to take people along the journey, we need to encourage them and teach them how to have a positive attitude. How do you teach people how to have a positive attitude? What I love about Darnell Self, who is my ultimate favorite speaker in the whole wide world and in our company, Darnell Self doesn't teach his team what to do. It's easy what to do. Share the services with people. That's all we need to do, right? Share the opportunity with people. But what Darnell Self does is his, he teaches his people how to be. He teaches his people how to be positive, polite, and self-motivated. And so with your leadership role and the people that God has put in your care, it is our responsibility to teach them how to hone a positive attitude to teach them the habits of personal development every day, to teach them how to take care of their bodies, to teach them and how by us first doing it by example. I love how every day Angela posts, you know, how many miles she walked today. And that's, that's inspiring. I know Angela, you don't, you're probably like, no one is looking at this and no one cares, or you might be thinking it's not making a difference, but guess what? You inspired somebody out there to take care of themselves because you've made the decision to do that, right? Now, here's another great uh, poem that I'll end with from John Maxwell's book, chapter six, Developing the Leader Within You. It's called The Lion Chaser's Manifesto. He says, quit living as if the purpose of life is to arrive safely at death. Run to the roar. Set God-sized goals. Pursue God-given passions. Go after a dream that is destined to fail without divine intervention. Stop pointing out problems. Become part of the solution. Stop repeating the past. Start creating the future. Face your fears. Fight your dreams. Grab opportunity by the main and don't let go. Live like today is the first day and the last day of your life. Burn sinful bridges. Blaze new trails. 
Live for the applause of nail scarred hands. Don't let what's wrong with you keep you from worshiping what's right with God. Dare to fail, dare to be different. Quit holding out, quit holding back, quit running away, chase the lion. Head face forward into it, right? The word fear, F-E-A-R, that's why a lot of people don't take action or don't start a business or don't even bother to try on the trek of success because of fear, F-E-A-R. Well, I think it was Eric Thomas that said his acronym for fear is face everything and rise. And that's what I want to encourage all of you to do today. We may have some obstacles in front of us. We may have some people who are trying to hold us back, some people who are trying to say some negative things. But I want you to prove to them that you are right. I want you to prove to them that you were destined for greatness and for an incredible life. And so I will leave you with this question today, which will open into the breakout rooms is, and that is, who are the people that you're developing and what can you do to help them hone the attitude for success that it's going to take for them to become successful? So thank you, everybody. Love you. Appreciate you so much.